Tapu pia moe lafia e rotoa, ka oloto o tonga. Tapu pia moe whanao mo makapuna ho eiki, ka maha mo tāpule. Tapu pia moe tarekita oe waa oe unwe e siti oe pasifik tonga e tonga ni. Me tapu mo ki mo tolo no koto a pe. Ka utangata mo ka o whiwhine, ko mo toku taimi, ka mo lava mai, ke tau kau whakataha. I hono kamatai ai fuofua pota tala pe public lecture o e fiafini. O mo whafofonga e ato a ek ministaro e ako, mo ako ngā awe, me a peheke e ofisa pule ngā awe, i hono tali tali, noto fie fia ki mo tōu e fiafiko i ni. Ne fuoloa pe ai whaka amu, ke lava e tamei ngā ngā awe ni, ai pota tala, e koe public lecture, Ke ako me i ai e mau whānau. Mo whaka ai 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 whekumi, mo e whaka totolo. I he kau whai i ako. O i kai ngatape i aki mau tōu i he api akoni. Kai pehe e foki ki aki nau tōu ko tō ape o ngā ufu a whai i ako i he otto ngani. I kai ke ngata ai, ka ke hoko ai whai ngā maari o e pōta tala. Ko ha whetu u e lava ke wahe wahe atu ai ai ngā hi ilo. Mo e ngahi pōtoi i he tapa koto a pe o e tau nofu i o tau whonuani Pea pehe e foki ki he ngahi ilo mo e pōtoi me o tau kāinga i tua pule anga Ko e takai ulua ki e ni Ko tau kamata i he fiafini Pea e leleia i ha wike e ono Aia ko e wike kaha u i he tai ta tau pe, feitu ta tau E hoko ai ki he takala o e kaweina ho noua e a whaiwhai pehe ai pe ka e oua ko lava e kaweina ho noono i he wike e nima me he ahoni Ko i ai ai kakai ilo ilo mo tau kei au pito he ngahi mala e keke ko fotutu u e komit fekumi ke nau wahe wahe mai e nau ngahi kato ke tau to o ai pea ke tau maari e ia ai Pea te tau maa whanai. Pea te ne whakatupu ai whiwhiri, mo e whaa whakakaukau i a te tau tōnu. Pea te ne ue i ki tau tōnu, ke tau ngā ue o whai hamera. Ko ia, o pehe ai ki whakawhofonga tāri tāri o e whia whili, pea mo e whia whia i hono kamata i o e pōta tāla, public lecture, takai ulu aki. Mā loa ho mo mea mai, Pea o ata e pea e whakaafe ke moutou e mea mai he wiki ka hau ki he hoko hoko atu ai e tau pota tala o whatu. Tahu Alkohol, 
and all of us father Paul wanted his son to go into university, study theology, read the people, so that he can follow his footsteps. But uh, Yohan Benoni talked to Paul and told him that your son is predestined to be a great mathematician.
He married Katharina uh, himself, and he had 13 children, and only five survived the five residents. Uh, and as you can see now, that it was very, it was a very sad household. And, uh, but that was not, <coughs> But that was not uh, an obstacle for his research in mathematics. Anyway, he had exceptional memory in which he was able to memorize a lot of things. He memorized plays, poems, including uh, logarithmic tables. And if you're a student of mathematics, you see the um, trigonometric tables and uh, statistics tables. Now, uh, Euler was able to memorize these tables and he wouldn't look up anything. If you have to look up the log of a number, he would just uh, memorize, he would just uh, bring it out uh, automatically. Okay? So, but uh, 9, 1730, he lost. Uh, he, uh, he lost his right eye, uh, well, he was uh, blind in one eye, yeah, the right eye. And after 41 years, in 1771, he was completely blind. He was not able, well, that's what most of the European scholars said, that now Euler is done. He is not, he won't, won't be able to write any more papers because he's completely blind. But no, in 1775, he wrote 50 papers while blind. <coughs> that was about an average of about one paper per week. He is now regarded as the Beethoven of mathematics. Beethoven was composing music he could not hear. While Euler was writing mathematics he could not see. And so, his legacy, his, the story about him, becomes an inspiration for other people that blindness couldn't, was not an obstacle for Euler. He still carries on to produce mathematics. And that leads on to the slide that uh, I want to address two things. The, the quantity of work that Euler did and also the quality. And I would address both, both of them separately. Okay. First, quantity. Uh, his work is called the Op Omnia. And that was published by the Swiss Academy very much later, when he died. Okay. It contains 75 volumes and over 25,000 pages long. So 25, uh, 75 volumes, if you stack them here, it will probably go above the roof. Okay? So uh, you see now the quantity. Uh, of work that, that, that Euler did was, was phenomenal, I would say. Hmm? During his lifetime, that is, he, he published about one third of all the mathematics of his time, while the rest of the world produced the other two thirds. Hmm? So he was a very <coughs> prolific writer, hmm? mathematician. In 1910, this guy here, Gustav Enestrom, from Switzerland as well, he catalogues Euler's work because that 75 volumes contains about 866 books and papers. And the catalogues themselves, catalog is just a little description of each and every one of the papers and books that Euler did. All the catalogs add up to 388 pa uh, pages. So you can see that the quantity of his work is, is phenomenal. We really can't uh, 
think of anyone who can write that much in his lifetime. Right? Oops, sorry. Now, he died in 1783. Uh, Euler died in 1783. <coughs> but between 1783 and 1830, he published another 159 papers. Yeah? In 1844, 61 more. And still he wasn't done. Eight more in 1849. And there is no mathematician like him. He 228 papers while dead. <laughs> but these are papers that were still on his desk, in his notebooks, in the uh, publishers, and they, and they became surfaced out when, during these times. Okay? So that's uh, uh, adds on to the quantity of work that was done by this guy mathematician, very prolific one. Yeah. Now, that leads on, let me address quality as well. But this was very, very hard for me to measure. I really can't, I really don't know how am I going to measure <laughs> the quality of work that was done by Euler. So what I did, I went into this website called uh, Wolfram Math World. And then, uh, yeah, MathWorld is an online mathematics reference. It's like an encyclopedia or dictionary of mathematics. And uh, on this website, you, you only record the significant discoveries, theorems, or concepts that are very, very important. It's recorded in MathWorld. Uh, the name of the contributor or the mathematician is also listed alongside the discoveries. So what I did was that I went to this uh, website and typed in the name Euler. And out come 790 entries. 790 entries means that a theorem, maybe the Euler line, the Euler characteristic, the Euler integral, the Euler formula, or Euler identity, all these things here, they come up to about 790 entries uh, alongside the name Euler. So, and then I <coughs> wanted to make some comparison with other mathematicians as well. So I typed in the next one, which is another famous mathematician from Germany by Carl Frederick Gauss, and not even half of his entries uh, can't reach the one half of what the uh, oil has, uh, have, well, are the, the points that recorded against the oiler's name. Okay. Another one from France, Acostin Louis Cauchy, and only about 126 entries. And uh, some people, like uh, some of us, been doing research and teaching mathematics for a lifetime. I try and type in their names, and this is the <laughs> result. <laughs> so um, now you can see the quality of work that, that Leonard Euler. Then the, uh, the comparison now is a little bit more, okay? you can understand what is going on here now. Okay? So that is the, basically the introduction to the work that was done by Euler. Okay? Uh, the quality and the quantity of his work is, is very much noted uh, worldwide right now. Okay? This is part two of my, my presentation. It is Euler's contribution to mathematics. What, uh, has, what he has contributed to the study of mathematics worldwide. Okay? This is uh, 1758. He came up with this very simple formula. V minus E plus F is equal to two. Where V is vertices, E is edges, and F is faces. Let me, like this one, like the cube. 
Now you can see the vertex is just a corner. The edge is marked uh, as the edge, and, and that is what we call the face. And if you count all the vertices, and count all the edges, and count all the faces, it always obey to this equation. That you take the vertices, you subtract off the edges, and then you add the faces, the answer is two, okay? For a cube, the vertices is eight, the edges is 12, <coughs> faces is six. Uh, plug it into the formula, you work it out, it comes out to be two. And the same applies to all these solids here, okay? Now, I have a, uh, these are some of my teaching resources. And these ones here, are what we call polyhedra. This one here is a polyhedra. This one here is another polyhedra. Uh, this one is another polyhedra. Okay. All these ones here, if you count the corners or the, the, these vertices and subtract off the edges, count the edges and subtract them off, and then add the faces, these faces here. The answer is always two. And same applies here. This one, this one, and every polyhedra. So, just to say a few things that these teaching resources here, if you take them to the primary schools and teach the kids of how to do this, very simple mathematical problem, I am sure that primary school t uh, students can understand. But uh, that is what this, this is all about. And all, because Euler was the only one who was able to see this one. Here. None of the geometers before him, including the Greeks, they missed out this very simple property uh, by the year. This is in uh, 1748. He gave us this number, E, and I think uh, most students who have studied uh, mathematics and cal especially calculus, they are familiar with this number, E. And uh, not only he gave us E, and he also gave us a method of how to work it out. And it's a very simple addition. The denominator of these fractions here are products. It is 1 over 1, 1 over 1 times 2, 1 over 1 times 2 times 3, 1 over 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, and you continue on in to infinity. The answer is always 2.718, that number up there, E. So he gave us E and also the method of how to work out E. This is a formula now in the very popular in calculus textbook of how to work out E, and you can do that by using that formula as well. This is the number E, he's commonly known in mathematics as the base of the hyperbolic logarithm or the natural logarithm. So this number here, Euler was the one who gave us that number. Okay? We also have the Euler identity which is this, uh, this equation here. E i x equals cosine of x plus i sine x. Well, in all mathematics, all mathematicians of the world have agreed that this is the most beautiful formula that has been uh, put into mathematical textbooks. And it is Euler's identity. Okay. And if you let x equals pi, those of you who understands this, you see the e i pi equal cos pi, and then you end up with the last equation, e i pi plus one is equal to zero. And the thing about this one here is that e is the constant that we saw in the previous slide. i is another constant, the square root of negative one. Pi is another constant, the ratio of the circumference and its diameter of a circle. Zero 
is the additive identity for addition, and one is the multiplicative identity. So all these five constants are connected with just one equation, and it is a result that falls off from Euler's identity. All these, uh, these uh, five constants are connected by just one equation. And when I looked at it, it is amazing that we have such an equation that connects all these five constants in mathematics. Well, this is just a little poem by Willick. E i pi plus one equals zero made the mathematician Euler a hero. From the real to complex, with our brains in great flex, he led us with zest, but not fear. So imagine if you were doing things like that and somebody write a poem about you. Uh, we, uh, yeah. <coughs> this is another problem by Euler. It is in 1734, called a parcel problem. And the parcel problem was this one here. Jacob Bernoulli, which is a brother of Johann Bernoulli, uh, Johann Bernoulli is Euler's uh, mentor, and he gave us this problem, and he wanted an answer to this one. Nobody in, all, in Europe, the whole of Europe, they never knew any answers to this, uh, this problem here. So what they did was that they, they sent out uh, notes and asked other academies if you could come up with an answer to this one here. Pages to less than two, because does not exceed two. And one fraction is one. The next fraction is ninth. If you add those numbers, so another answer to this one here. Oil up with the answer to be I square of X. I looked at it and said to myself, where is the circle? What's the circle doing here? Because pi is supposed to be a constant belonging to the circle. But I can see no circle around here. So uh, what he did was that he supplied four different proofs uh, for this identity. Okay? And the most well-known is an expansion of the sine function in two different ways. And then after that, he compared coefficients of one expansion to the other expansion. Uh, I myself, have sometimes when I teach calculus, I wanted to do this proof here. But because uh, the background of my students is not well, uh, well prepared so that they can be able to, to understand what I will be talking about when uh, doing this, the, uh, proving this identity, and do exactly what Euler did uh, in those years. 1736, we have another problem called the Seven Bridges of Konigsberg. Konigsberg, a Prussian city now known as Kaliningrad in Russia. This is the city and the blue mark on the, that's, the, that's a river flowing through the city, and we have uh, bridges there, like this one, yeah. and there are seven bridges uh, uh, in this city. This is the problem that they were seeking and asked for. Is it possible to walk across all, three, uh, all seven bridges only one? Sunday they go there and walk over the bridges and they told them, can we 
traverse all the bridges once and only once, and then come back to where you started from. They did that for many, many years, but they couldn't. So they asked the mayor of the, uh, of the city of Konigsberg, but the mayor didn't know any solution about it. So, in fact, they asked Euler if there's a solution to this problem. Is it possible to walk all the seven bridges, traverse only one bridge at a time without going, uh, without traversing it twice? And then Euler came and looked at the bridges, so he drew <coughs> these diagrams. Uh, there is an island inside, which is A. Uh, the other, um, other bank of the, of the river C and B. And also another island D. So he, he then draw this simplified version that C and A are connected by two bridges, as you can see from the picture, and also the configuration on the other side. Uh, A and B are connected by two bridges, and so on. But if you count the bridges that, uh, that connect C, there are only three. Similarly to D, there are only three bridges that reaches D. B, you have another three bridges that reaches B. And A, you have five bridges reaching A. And then Euler start explaining to them why it is impossible to traverse all bridges at once. He said, if you have a room with one door and you stand outside, you go inside, you're stuck there, you can't come out because there's only one door. If you come out, you traverse the door twice. So the idea is, the solution, if there was two doors, you would be able to go through the other one and get out on the other one. So the number of bridges has to be even so that you go in and go out. But all these corners here, A, B, C, and D, they are connected with old bridges. So you really can't do it, and that is the reason why you can't traverse all the bridges once. But he did not see this as a mathematical problem, but say, based on common sense alone, the solution is just common sense. There is no need for mathematics to solve such a problem. Okay? Now we have a branch of mathematics which is called graph theory. And it originates from this problem, yeah? which is a very important branch in modern mathematics now. You have uh, to study graph theory, you know how to do networks in computers, how to do these useful for electricians when they are wiring up a house, the plumbers when they connect their pipes, they are connected in, with these principles of graph theory. Okay? How the roads are connected in our island, it is uh, consequences of the graph theory. <laughs> so, if uh, oil was al uh, alive today, he would realize that it is really advanced mathematics, that graph theory is, but he didn't regard it as mathematics. Okay? Amicable numbers. Two positive whole numbers, M and N, are amicable. Amicable means friendly. Okay? If each is the sum of the proper devices of the other one, okay? and I think we deserve to see an example for this one here. Suppose we have uh, 220 and 284. These are two. Uh, amicable numbers, according to Euler. And you have the, all the numbers that can divide evenly to 220. And these are the numbers that I have listed, except 220 itself, because that's what we mean by proper devices, excluding the number itself. All other devices excluding the number itself. And they all add up to the other number, 284. 
sum of the proper divisors of 284, 1, 2, 4, 71, and 1, 4, 2, they add up to 220. Okay? And we say that these two are amicable, friendly, because the divisors of one number adds up to the other number. Okay? So that's what we mean by amicable. Okay? Anyway, a short history of amicable numbers. Okay? The Greeks knew this pair, 284 to 20, that was the Greeks about 300 BC. Only one, the Greek only, they knew only one. The ninth century, this mathematician here from Middle East, uh, Tapit Ibn Kura, he had a rule that generate two more pairs. Okay? Two more pairs of amicable numbers. They're very, very hard to find. Yeah? Fermat, one of the mathematicians in France, discovered, found this pair. And, uh, but he didn't know that this pair here was known by the, uh, the uh, mathematician from the Middle East in the ninth century. So he was going down the same path as what uh, the uh, Tapit Im Kura was doing. Okay. 1638, Descartes found the third pair. Okay. So there were only three pairs up to the time of Euler. Euler, he looked at this and there was only three pairs available to the world. Three pairs of amicable numbers. And mathematicians have been trying in vain to find a method of generating amicable numbers, but they couldn't. Seventeen fifty, Euler found fifty-eight pairs. Hmm? So that is what he did. He he was able to see a pattern that we didn't see, that the others couldn't see, and he was able to generate uh, fifty-eight pairs all at once. So an increase in wealth supply of amicable numbers from three to sixty-one. Hmm? That is an increase by a factor of twenty. And. Uh, that is a very short history of amicable numbers, but you can see now the kind of mind, that the mindset of Euler. He was able to see things that we really can't see. Okay? <coughs> this is a factorization of a fourth degree polynomial. It was a problem, and uh, it was generally believed that the fourth degree polynomials, like uh, x to the power of 4 minus 1, that is what we call a fourth degree polynomial. The highest power is 4, and that is the degree of that polynomial. And that can be factorized. Factorization of polynomials is taught in high schools now. But uh, this is uh, that we can factorize x to the power of 4 minus 1 into x squared plus 1, x plus 1, and x minus 1. Anyway. Nicholas Penuli, another from the same family, eh, told Euler that such factorization is not always possible because he has found a fourth degree polynomial which cannot be factorized. And the polynomial is this what is given down here. He said, this, is, this one here, you can't factorize that one. So Euler said, all right, let's have a look. So this is the polynomial, and then Euler was able to factorize that. This is the one factor, and this is the other one. So, one day I told Sophie, let's multiply this out and see whether this is correct or not. And then we were standing beside the whiteboard and work it out. It was indeed true, correct. Okay. So, that is just some of the, uh, of the mathematics <coughs> that Euler had produced. Uh, most of the work that he has done is, some of them can be taught at high schools, about polyhedra that can be taught at primary school. So he, his teaching ability was ranges from primary level up to university level. And that is one of the uh, 
things that I like, this mathematician here. And he shows you how he work out a problem. Okay? Anyway, a German mathematician by the name of Frobenius once remarked that Euler lacked only one thing to make him a perfect genius. Okay? You know, when you look at the uh, mathematician's work, you see equations, and it is almost incomprehensible. Okay? I've, I've uh, been going through Robini's thesis this afternoon, and I couldn't understand anything at all, because I know he was a genius. That is why Ola. He failed to be incomprehensible. Hmm? He shows you how he did his mathematics. Yeah? And it's a pity that we uh, don't have enough time so that I can show you how he did his mathematics. We can stand behind him, look upon his shoulders, and see how he did his work. Yeah? And then he can show us what he did. He is that kind of guy. Yeah? Going up to this, uh, I, I got this from the internet, and uh, I have no reference for that, who produces this saying, talent is doing easily what others find difficult. A genius is doing easily what others find impossible. And with those uh, uh, sayings, I would say that Euler is a genius. Thank you. Eu. I think I got a cow, a cow, a cow, a cow, a 
kai mora bido pe eu fai ngata bido once in a lifetime da to ha ma fai ngata ngata pe pe wa pe fine poto pe ka go ka go tu ya we ma ro ku ka ge ma ro no a ta kai fa so si ari ma go fai ngam me eu ta tu ni hanga shape up no ulunga nga mo ya nga ni fo ka 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 ma go na ku na e tonu pe ne tu bua ge pe a ta kai ri ne tu bua ge ta u ta ha to Kua mele wa kia kia benuri, pia ka tu tu ni asiana, he ka ke takala si kita wa, te ki alu ka me utek spu ka ko ni ka mata ho lau to hi, ko to ki ata be ha sa ba te ki ta tala no ai, ko ni fo ka ka wi, ka ku mahal ku, alu fo ka ta be mahal mu mana ko ki hele so ni, he, ka ku ma ko ni ma ko ni ngahi 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 ta ri be ti wa la wa fa i ga yo, yo, yo be. Kihe wafe mahiwa 
Naya ego series of programs ya gaya nai. Pama fora maya ya meretio, me a free se di he televisor nai. Fikau aku be mo history of mathematics. Tapi me aku mari ya, mari ya iya ya kakak itu orang kan tau tefi tu aku kau ngah fai kawa kau ngoi for for angam. Kalau mesti fai lah dia me mari yang kau faham tau. Kau kau gaya uye kita mai kia aku mo kau faya aku me aku nak uhin aku kia. Pick up with wrong audience. Mau pelas kau ya, mau mari ya, betul no fai kawan mea. Kau 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 ilup, kau 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 message ke face itu kau nak uhin aku alu aku kia. Kau kau pilih kau 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 ini alu dia kita. Kau saya betul no fak we fai ngamia kau ni. Aye fai ngam public forum kau ni. Nak kau fau ngai ya ya ke. Kau mau mai kau faya kau mau kakai ke? Nau ya, nau interest mea kau ya. He fai ngai reason kau ya. Kau fano ngai mahal nak toki lah yang influence oh mea kau ya heo uhinga kahau. Kau ya mau. Aduh tu dia tu heo wesi ay. Tentu kau ay kalama kau ay kau faya kau. Kau ay history of mathematics or something like that. Oh kau faya kau ya ya kau ya. Iya. Oku kau kos uluaki kan kau kau tak uluaki. Oku fakar kau ayam ya kau ya. Bukan nokong awak naya kau history. Kau emak kau tak uli fiah kau kau ya ayam kau ya. Oku tahu fiah kau itu. Baik baik. Iya. Hello, ya Fiu. Komen. Iya. Mesentuli, iya. Nae, aku fufua. Iya, kau kau kalisi. Atau uye tolongnya aku kimu aja kalais. Kau kau mai kita ngata ya. Oba uye ni mama. Koi. Kau 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 Nah, lo begi hanga mention ni, it is totally useless. There's no way you can fix your refrigerator in your car, man. Kau kau faham hanga me ayah ayah, aku mari ayah, kau piu a mathematician. Hono aku kau me aku aku tak tahu ngah. Tapi aku hanga aku mari kan aku tahu. Uh, this kind of reciprocity and uh, numbers. It has is totally useless. Take a hand on my own.
Cu am cu răspunsul de că este încă atomat, pentru că la urmă a în apărurile. Cu putin că e fi faina ta. Ei fac ca o pauză că e apoi cu atomanit, ca mai întâi de atâi aur. Și o fac eu. Am zis că am un nabăc că aur, pe nu am făcut aur. Că coloare e ouă. Păi e ce mă uită ca nu e aur. Păi e ouă, e mă uită, 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 e mă eu estou com a minha filha com o meu pai, 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 com quem foi quando esteve comprou, estava quem me apoia, quando tu começa a falar a falar vai cair nisso. Computa nesse lugar que você já está agora. Quando ele cai quando esteve comprou, a minha filha está a falar vai cair nisso. Aí tinha a parte que ele cai. Aí eu botar uma coisa, uma garrafa para ele a botar lá e ele me apoia a falar muito mais. Está cá o que ele tinha. Ele quer ver que está preso na torre de pôr o meio em torno. Eu me dei um jeito para vender a casa. Aí eu ganhei uma casa de meu pai, minha mãe, uma casa de meu pai. Quando eu peguei o homem, eu estava lá com o pessoal de leite, eu ia para o meu pai, eu ia para o meu pai. Já foi... O... 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 เรื่องมันก็มาตั้งยืนเท่าที่ปากเรียกสัตว์ตัวเดียวเป็นคนที่ดีอาหารตัวเท่าห้างเอาฟ้าแบบเพชรโอ้ยที่อายุนี้โอ